How's it going everyone? I'm Sean and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to spill all. I'm going to show you exactly how I take care of my instruments during just routine checkups. The patient for this video is going to be this guy. This is, for anyone who hasn't seen it, my GGBO build of 2021. One of my favorite guitars that I've ever built. One of the, not one of the, the first guitar I built when I came to England and yeah, it needs a little bit of TLC. Grab yourself a nice hot cup of tea, coffee, whatever you want, get comfortable, and let's get into it. First things first, before anything else, we need to make sure we have a suitable area. So make sure you put down a neck rest and some kind of soft material so that you don't damage or dink the guitar. I like to use this non-slip mat, which is great, except do be careful if you do not specifically keep it clean, it can leave marks on the guitar. Next off, I need to simply remove the old strings. Then using a good, strong cutters, just, I like to snip them off down at this end. Crucially, you only want to snip the strings off when they are not under full tension anymore. If you snip them at full tension, then you can introduce a shock to the neck and, well, that's just not good. One of my pet peeves is when people do what they call the luthier's knot, where basically you tie the string on. Absolutely daft, does not help, and it just makes taking strings off an absolute pain in the butt. These strings are bad enough, and I haven't knotted these on. Now, this one's a little bit odd because it's got its tailpiece. So I'm going to pop off the tailpiece and start pulling the strings off. Because it's convenient, I'll also pop in the new strings to this now. I am using some Rotosand yellows. I'm not particularly beholden to any particular string gauge, and I had these on hand. Before we get strings back on this, there's a little bit of maintenance to be done here. These frets need to be polished up and that fretboard needs a little bit of oil. You want to start with a fret rubber before you do the oil, otherwise the oil gets into the rubber and gunks it all up. I like to use basically the finest rubber possible here. And that all this does is remove the crud and grime and build up. This is not a good enough substitute for actually polishing, but it works really well for a, for a string change kind of service. That's a lot better. You can see the difference in those three immediately. With the frets all polished up, I'm just gonna get some shop towel tissue, and I will be using some fretboard restorative from Crimson Guitars. And this is potentially one of, if not the, most satisfying things in the world. Look how well that comes up. I'm going to just put on plenty of oil here, more restorative as it is. Let it sit for a couple of minutes and then wipe off the excess. And this fretboard should look amazing afterwards. And that is gorgeous. I love how the inlay looks as well. Really, really happy with this. If you haven't seen this getting built, then I do have an entire build series of it, if that is something you're interested in. I have a link in my description, or you can head over to my channel and check it out. Before I put these strings back on, I'm just gonna go over the whole guitar, give it a quick wipe down with a nice soft cloth, any dust 
get all of it off. And don't forget to give the tuner buttons a little bit of a, a bit of a clean. For stringing my guitars, I've got a fairly specific way of doing it for non-locking tuners. I will pull the string up, keeping it under tension as much as possible, pre-rotate it like that, and then pop the end of the string underneath the last wind. Pull it through, give it a good tug, get as much of that slack through as possible, and now when I wind it up, I've got a lot, lot less winding to actually do. Once again, I will pull the string up, rotate it around on the higher strings. I like to go around a little bit more. I usually hold down the previous winds, but not the very last one, like that. And then pop the end through so that it comes out underneath the last wind, but on top of any previous winds. Give it a pull through. And now when I tighten it, it comes up nice and quick. But it also looks super, super neat and tidy. This stage I will tune it all up to pitch. before clipping off the strings, roughly, what's that, an inch oversized. This extra length just allows me, in case I need to pull the strings off for whatever reason, it allows me to get them back on with relative ease. Because trying to wrangle strings that have been cut right short is a nightmare. After tuning to pitch, make sure to stretch those strings. You would be amazed how much of a difference that makes. I usually stretch in the middle and then stretch at the tuner, stretch at the bridge, and then back to the middle. And we will then see how far out of tune that goes. Not too bad, not great. Sounds beautiful. I'll tune it right back up and then we go through making sure it's set up nicely. At this stage with everything tuned up, I will simply do a quick check. I'm gonna check that the truss rod is good, so I'm going to hold my first fret and I'm gonna hold where the neck meets the body, which is down here. The gap in between there should be tiny, almost nothing. So I'm not even sure if that will pick up on the camera, but it moves just a little bit, but it is roughly the thickness of a business card. That is what you're looking for. So, I'm perfectly happy with this truss rod. Don't need to touch it, happy days. Next, I'm gonna check the action. I'm gonna hold the first fret again. I'm gonna use a action gauge. Very, very important. If you're gonna get one of these, get a good one, get a metal one. I had a plastic one. I thought these were worthless for a long time. Turns out the plastic one I had, garbage. This is a nice metal one from Crimson Guitars, of course. And what I do, I hold the first fret, Pop it in, and there are graduations along the bottom. I'm looking for, well, looking for whatever action I want. Good action usually is between 1.25 millimeters and 1.5 millimeters on the low string, and then whatever the low string is, you want the high string set 0.25 millimeters less. This one, I have this set disgustingly low. It is one millimeter on my low E and 0.75 on my high E. Just double check that one now. Yeah, it is. That is minuscule, absolutely tiny. Most guitars, you can't get that low. This was a bit of an experiment for how accurately, how well could I do fret work and have it playable. And this is about it. 
I could get it a hair lower, but not much more. Just a casual flex right there. So, now that I know my action is good, I'm not going to check my nut because my nut should be good if the nut is a one and done. Uh, last thing I need to check is my intonation. Pluck my open string, pluck my 12th string, they are exactly the same, no intonation necessary. Go through all of these. If any of them do need to change, that is what the saddles are for. That is what the saddle adjustments are for. I will move them forward or back as needed to get an even note at the 12th. What I'm looking for is the 12th note to be exactly the same. If it's different, I will adjust. For these saddles, the way I remember the way to adjust this is if this note is flat, I will move these saddles forward. So flat, forward. It's the way I remember it. It doesn't matter how you remember it, just that you do is important. I used to always just Google it. There are great diagrams online of someone has drawn a saddle and then an arrow pointing towards the knot if flat. Perfect. So I'm going to check all of that now and then I'm going to be very happy and this guitar is good to go. Perfect. One very important thing to note here, one of my strings was a hair too low. And that doesn't matter because I plucked it open and when I plucked it on the 12th, it was exactly the same. It doesn't matter what the notes are or how accurately they're tuned, just so long as they're the same, that is what matters. But you do want all six strings as close to tension as possible. If that was two tones down, it wouldn't work. But because it's pretty much the same, it's perfect. Very, very happy with that. I, just in case anyone is wondering, I'm using a snark tuner. I love these, I think they're great, I think they're for the money, absolutely fabulous tuners, plenty accurate for setting intonation and everything, at least as, as part of a routine thing. If I was doing a more in-depth setup and everything, I might want to use a Peterson strobe if I was changing anything, which a strobe tuner is just more accurate. Generally, I find them too accurate, where you're going to spend so much time chasing yourself that it's a nuisance. For this, all I'm really doing is changing the strings on this thing. I don't want to get into things that heavy. After all of that, last thing to do is clip the string ends. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was insightful. I hope it was a little bit of an insight into how I maintain my guitars. Most of the time I don't go into this much detail, but I will always check the frets, check the fretboard, see if it looks thirsty. And I'll usually check the truss rod, check the action, and that's it. If the truss rod and action don't need to be adjusted, chances are your intonation is the same, but it takes two seconds to check it, so why not? Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Check out my other videos. If you want to see this being built, there is an entire series where nothing is hidden. Go check that out. Link in description, link on my channel. My channel is the link. Go check it out. Thank you so much. I'll see you all again real soon.